Hello and welcome once again to another special episode of India Today, India Tomorrow, where we have today a very special group of people with us. One of India's leading business families have come together for India Today, India Tomorrow. Please welcome on the show, joining me now, Sajjan Jindal, chairman of the GSW group, his wife, Sangeeta Jindal, who is the chairperson of GSW Foundation. I am joined by Parth Jindal, Managing Director of GSW Cement and Paints and also the mind behind GSW's entry into the world of sport as well as Tarini Jindal Handa, the Managing Director of GSW Reality and Tanvi Jindal Shetty, Founder of Museum of Solutions. Thank you all very much for joining us. You are all very nervous, I believe. <laughs> <laughs> Why are you nervous? First time before the camera. Yeah. Sort of. Kind of. <laughs> but you're, you're more cool before the camera, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. No, no, no. But it's still, it's first time we're all together. So it's, it's oh, first time all together on camera. Yes. yes. Right. Probably, yeah. Is yes, it? yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 But, but do you all meet often or not? Or are you all living five very different lives? We're very, very connected. Very, very. Uh, we meet every week. Every week, once a week? Yeah. And I, I call each of them at least three times a day. <laughs> even now? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, even now. Every single day, where are you, what are you doing, what are you having for dinner, it's like a... No, because all, you know, it's a very, it's a very different world that the three of you live to the world that your parents live in. You all had love marriages? Yes, yes. Yes. You're right. Yeah. You're married to a Maharashtrian, you to a Punjabi, you to a Gujarati. So very different, right, from the world. National so, integration. National integration in one room. I give them full control to do what you want. Well, not we that. didn't give you a choice. <laughs> you know, because as the sort of head of the family, uh, traditional old style Hisar family comes to Mumbai in a way. It's a, it's a new world from where you started off yeah, yeah, uh, with your father. Absolutely. Absolutely new way. And, uh, and I give a lot of credit to Mumbai for whatever our family has done and wherever I have, uh, you know, how I have succeeded or, or whatever I have achieved in life. I give a lot of credit to Mumbai because this city has so much, so much energy, so much power, so much energy. It's not about only politics. It's not about only money. It's about, I don't know, it's, you know, she's like head of culture. She brought in so much culture in our family. I mean, Mumbai has given us so much. It's amazing. And you know, because when you started off in Hisar with, the, uh, with your father, O.P. Jindal, must have been a very different world that you started off so, in. So, yeah, so Rajdeep, Hisar uh, is also a very nice town. You know, when I was growing up, it was a very modern town. It was, you know, though it sounds Haryanvi, but it is, uh, uh, and it's not like uh, one of those Haryana village or town. It's a, it was a very modern town with a university. With we, we had swimming pools, we had tennis courts, squash courts. So we grew up in a in a in a modernish uh, town, you know. So that was, and of course I went to boarding school in Missouri and then to Bangalore to do my engineering. So, so we had this. Uh, my family, my mother wanted us to get very well educated, so she sent us to good schools all all the time. So, so it was interesting. You know, I am looking at Sangeeta's reaction to that and she doesn't sound like the person who wanted to spend the rest of her life in Hisar, right? So basically we had an arranged marriage hmm. and I married to the potential. That was the story. I see. You married, you, you saw potential. In, in, in Sajjan Jindal you saw potential of the future. Right. Because I was born and brought up in Kolkata hmm. and all the culture, the art, uh, everything, all my friends were Bengali, I was in the, um, from a modern high school and I realized that one day this uh, young lad and their family will actually Not grow. Not you, your mother, what <laughs> you, you were <laughs> I also agreed and I knew I turned them around, that's my point. You know, if, uh, were, you, were you freer in that sense? Were you given much, uh, much more free choices? You went to an NYU, you all went abroad to study, do you think you all were much freer than your parents were in the choices you made with so your I life? I think my sister was the first grandchild of the Jindal family to go abroad to study. Wow. Um, but full credit to my mom. Yeah. Like she always really pushed for independence. In I mean you never told them at any stage this is the way you want them to lead their lives. The choices they made are their own choices. As in she tried many times but I think we always were able to push back. And I think they allowed us to kind of speak our mind from a very young age. You know, the, the reason I'm asking you this is because a lot of business families in the 21st century have struggled to adjust to the new age. 
yeah. and have either then broken apart or not been able to grow. Here I find each of you doing very, very different things, so which is, is that something you consciously felt was important, not just steel, we've got to do more. Yeah. No, it was actually we never, I never planned it that way, both of us, but the idea was that uh, we, we were a very close family because we lived away from our joint family in Delhi, mm. so we, we, we were a nuclear family here in Mumbai. But so we were very close. We were uh, like I never brought home any work. I we worked very. I worked very hard uh, all all through my life. But when I came home, I I wanted to spend time with my kids. When I was very young, uh, you know, when we just gotten married, I was reading this book about uh, Rockefeller Senior, and somebody asked him. One interviewer asked him during his uh, you know final days that what do you regret the most? And he said that I regret not seeing my kids grow up because I was working hard and I never saw my kids grow up. So that had left a real mark on my head that, you know, I, I don't want to live that life. Even if I do well in life, even if I make money, but I don't want to see that my, I've never played with my kids. And also I, I've really grown up with them like friends. I mean, Sangeeta, of course, is complete friends with them. And I also, you know, spend today also we, we work out in the gym together. We go and play a game of tennis together, squash together, cricket all the time. So, you know, life has been a lot of fun so so that's why I, we both of us gave them a lot of independence that whatever you want to do if it's your choice if you like them you, uh, so be it so even your business choices because you know I saw the two of you at a Delhi Capitals match if you recall a few months ago and you all were getting very excited the match was closed lots of father son bonding but you sort of venturing into other areas particularly sport football Bengaluru FC Delhi Capitals was that again your decision or do you go and consult dad and say look should I get into uh, franchise cricket? No, I think both mom and dad have been extremely supportive to all of us. So whenever we go with a new idea, uh, there's been a lot of encouragement. So sports, I think from childhood, the entire family, whether it was my mom's side or dad's side, were very passionate about sport. I remember every Olympic game since 1996 is Leander Pace's first medal. I remember every hockey game that we watched together. And it was always ingrained that we need to do something for sport. And obviously my chacha, when he fought for the flag and you know the whole passion for India was there from my Babaji and then my chacha and then everyone at home. So when the idea came that we should get into sport, they were extremely encouraging. Both mom and dad said that go for it. Uh, it's a great, you know, great way to give back to India. And it's a great way for the country to, you know, Progress. You know, when, when uh, Neera Chopra finally got that Olympic gold, I said, you know, Parth has to get a slice of it. Ek chota sa to Parth, you must, go, you must keep with you, right? No, no, I think it's all credit to him. But so we were, were all sitting and watching Neera Chopra's final throw and we were, I remember... In front of the TV? Or in front yeah, of the TV yeah. and, and uh, you know, it was, because it was in Japan, we couldn't go there, right, right. for these Olympics because of COVID. So we were all there and we were all very nervous and suddenly he threw this and he won the gold. This fellow started crying. You know, he was jumping and crying and we, jumping. We, we, and crying. we were all crying. Yeah. So this fellow was really, he was hysterical. We couldn't control him. So, so then I told him that, okay, now it's, he's done, he's done, it's okay. And that's fantastic because all of you, you're incredibly, you worked with Teach for India, uh, which is a great NGO which works among underprivileged and you worked in Mankur in Mumbai as a teacher for a couple of years. I did. I think the one thing that I have to give credit to both my mom and dad is that they'd never say no to us. If we can prove ourselves and if we can have the right reasoning, they might not agree with us 100% but they won't say no to us. So when I was actually placed in the school in Mankur, my mom was very upset. She was like, how can you go there every day? I was like, mom, I'm going to go and I'm going to go by train. And she was like, there's no way you're going to travel by train. So what I used to do is to go by car to the train station, tell my driver you stay here and then take a rickshaw and go to school because I didn't want the community to know that I'm coming in a private you car. Know, to all our viewers, Mankur is very far away yeah, from yeah. South Mumbai where we are at, a, at the moment. Yeah. And you then moved into holistic education and yeah. that's and where it's you're... A, one, one of the biggest slums. It's a, like that's Arabi, right. Arabi, it's, Arabi. A re, it's where everyone from the from Peter Mello Road and Churchgate area has been rehabilitated in these Mara right. So you work in a slum area yeah. for a couple of yeah. years amongst kids. Incredible. And you've also discovered yourself in the world of design and architecture, which is again very different from the world of steel. <laughs> yeah. You know, all of this is very far away from what the original family business was. Is yeah. that again 
uh, your personal interest and choice? Yes, absolutely. But I think the one uh, thread amongst all of us which my parents instilled was, my dad always said to us, with privilege comes responsibility. And, um, you know, whether it's sports, whether it's education, whether it's architecture, craftsmanship, it all comes with that sense of deep responsibility towards our country and how to make it better. You know, corporate social responsibility, which is what JSW Foundation also sort of represents in arts, culture, education. Is this something that you thought is your way of taking forward the family brand in a way? Because in, let's say, 30 years ago, very few people did real philanthropy. There were the Tatas and a few other groups. Now more and more corporates are getting into uh, uh, doing sort of genuine CSR work? I think uh, in all business families that corporate social responsibility is ingrained in all of us. I somehow when I shifted to Mumbai I wanted to do something different because I was not allowed in the family business. So I always used to tell my girls of course part I knew will join the business. I used to ingrain him also in his when he's five years old, that you have to come and you have to join the business. He knew it. Are you saying women can't join the family business? No, no. When I was, in my uh, in, generation, in your, in women were not uh, allowed in the family business. Would you in change, my generation. Would you change that today? Yes. You know, if your, no, no. If, if your granddaughter wanted to join the family business and said, I want to... Uh, no, no. You know, so look, I look. used to tell these girls that you must attempt joining the family business. Mm -hmm. And after they came back, they realized, they, they try, they, she tried, she mm. went to the JSW Energy Board and she said, I'm, I'm just not interested, it's not my passion. You know, in, in that sense, steel is not an easy business, right? Yeah. From the outside, it looks very easy. You sort of diversified, built it into a multi-billion empire from what your father started with small buckets, I think, in, in Hisar. Yeah. Uh, is, it, is it from the... Was that your passion, that you want to build this big steel empire? So, yeah, so, uh, uh, you know, I was, when I was growing up in Hisar, my father was building this steel mill and uh, was ever expanding it, but in a very small way. At that time, India was very small, right? So, um, so I, I grew up watching him working very hard, and, uh, but I really enjoyed it, you know, the industrial setup. And though it was small at that time, but I really enjoyed it, and that stayed in with me. And when I was doing my engineering, I really wanted to make it big in steel business. And when I wanted to set up my first steel plant, I went to my dad and I said that I want to set up the steel plant. He said, are you crazy? You know, steel plant is, is not a joke. You know, you will, you will uh, develop a blood pressure, you will have diabetes, and you will lose your sleep, lose your appetite. I don't want you to do that. You must enjoy your life and we have now enough. Why do you want to do all that? So, so that day I got a little depressed and next day again morning I went to him. No, no, dad, but I really, I really want and I've got this uh, great idea and I want to do it. He said, okay, if you really want to do it and you are okay to live with all these uh, problems which I have uh, yesterday told you, then you go ahead, but, uh, but I don't, don't expect anything great from me or your brothers. If you want to do, it, is, it will be your uh, own baby. You will, you will swim or drown with it. You know, don't think, if you fail, then you can come back to Hisar and I'll give you one, one room in the, in the house and one room in the office, you can spend your life there. Yeah, so he gave me carrot and stick, both. No, interesting, because you know, there is, it, I, you find that a lot of uh, family businesses are caught between, do we go and stick with the old economy or do we turn to the new economy businesses increasingly? You know, is that, is that a battle? Would you be as keen as he was with uh, his father to say, Dad, I want to expand the steel business? Or are you more inclined to say, I want to diversify into new areas where I'm more comfortable with? No, I think, I think it's a bit of both. Because if you look at the core strength of the family and the core strength of the group, it is steel. And there is such a large opportunity in India. So, and India is going to continue to need steel for so many more years. And the amount of expansion, the amount of growth that's happening, steel is going to be very relevant. So we are the leaders in it. So why go away from that? However, at the same time, we have to continue to remain relevant. So we have to move into new businesses. So we got in now into the cement business, which is also an old economy business, but it's linked to the steel business. Paint is a completely new business that we've entered. And now we're starting a building materials online platform as well. So it's very important to remain relevant. So, and I also personally really enjoy, uh, you know, these businesses. 
whenever I go to the steel plant and I see what mom and dad have built, uh, it's truly inspirational to see that size, that scale. Otherwise, you know, just being on a computer and building online things, it's exciting. But but to see a steel plant and, and to see a manufacturing setup like that is really exciting. You know, the reason I'm, where I'm coming from is that uh, you went to cathedral. All of you went to cathedral, South Mumbai school versus Hisar, where you went, is a huge, you know, cultural shock in a way. So many young people tell me, you know, we are more comfortable in the digital world than the old bricks and mortar steel industry. Did you give him any piece of advice when he was... No, I mean, I mean uh, no, I, you know, I don't believe in giving too many advices. And neither did my father. He no, never, no. never told me, don't do this or do that. Sink and swim. A sink or yeah, swim. Yeah, yeah, it's your baby. You, you do if you, if you, yeah, uh, sink or swim. Exactly. So that's what I also, when he finished from Harvard and came back, I told him that, listen, uh, buddy, you are, we are actually buddies. And I'm also young and I'm not going to give up my business. So steel is my baby. So you got to start something. And I have these, uh, these uh, other, other industries or you build your own. So that's what he started, cement and paint and sports and now many other new ideas like online and all he's doing. Similarly, she, she decided to do fashion and I, first year, because she's the oldest, so most of the experiments both of us done on her. <laughs> she was the one you experimented yeah, on. Yeah, experimented on and then failed and then thereafter we left them alone. So, uh, so we told her that, you know, why don't you uh, join me in the steel business or do something, you know, uh, in the... She, she said, no, Dad, I want to do what, what I enjoy the most. So she started with some fashion boutique, where, which she didn't succeed, and then she wanted to do something else. I said, okay, do what, what you like. So now I take steel, cement, paint, and I do architecture. And you do architecture, and you've got sort of housing projects coming yes, up. Yes, and I take commodity industries, and I make them into luxury products. So. so there's always a link somewhere down the way. You're doing education, which is very much part of your foundation. Are you the glue that holds all of them together? Yes. Are you Are you the one? I'm the only one. Huh? Yeah. She, she's the? 100%. Hey, 98%, 2%. Yeah, yeah, something. You've got to give something to your dad. Some credit yeah, to me yeah. also, man. We'll take a break, because it's very interesting interesting. Your grandfather was a farmer. Your father started the business. You uh, built the business and taken it to new levels and then you've got the next generation. You're with India today, India tomorrow. Is, is that your role in a way? Is that how you see your role that you've got to be the person who provides them some kind of a moral compass that look, you know, let's whatever we do, we are family at the end of the day. So I had just had my daughter huh? and I was very happy just being at home. She would, could not handle it. She was like, Kandi, you have to go to office. You have to do something. Take this project. Take that yeah, project. And whenever we don't She's meet for some time, she'll always tell me, have you met your sisters? Where are they? Do you talk to them? Have you had lunch with them? And she tells them also, have you spoken apart? Where is he? What is he doing? You're, she keeps us all together. together. So there's, there's this huge desire from my parents, which is incredible for us to create. Mm -hmm. And we get full freedom. But it if I was at home and not doing anything, it would drive them bananas. I mean, when I was 17, not married, come back from college, if I wasn't up at 9 o'clock, the banging on the door would start. You know, that it's 9. Like, we finished half our day. Why are you not up? Like, so, no, no difference for you between the girls and, and, and part. That they all have to be something as individuals, right? They've seen us grow. Hmm. They've seen Sajjan and me grow. They were young children when they knew that their dad would come at 9 or 10 in the night. So they know that we have uh, strived hard to who we are now. As we look ahead to the future, to India tomorrow, how do you see the future? Let's start with you, uh, Parth, in a way. What is for you, where do you see yourself in the business 20 years from now? Oh, I think I think we see ourselves as uh, a group that is going to focus on the core economic sectors of the Indian economy. Um, I think as a group, productivity is going to be a big focus for us. Digitization is going to be a big focus for us. And going into more related realms uh, within the economy is going to be a big focus. So I think the, the whole economy is moving towards digital. And even the way c customers consume products is moving towards digital. So how we as JSW are going to transform ourselves to cater to our customers' requirements is going to form the, you know, the next decade and then the future. So e-commerce being a big driving force in a way for even all the products that you have. Absolutely. Because you know, we were speaking before we did this interview about even the reality sector. Once associated with you know, uh, uh, how do I pay off someone under the table. Now you are saying with Rera there, 
things are changing. It's a you can do clean real estate today. Right? Absolutely. Is is that something that has given you a sense of assurance that therefore I can do this for the next 10, 20 years? Yes, absolutely. And it the seem the system has become quite seamless. You upload everything on the internet. The officers will respond to you. Even getting the permissions for any new building permissions or anything has become much easier. So it's changing, and it gives you a lot of hope. And you, you feel equally hopeful about education, having worked, you know, actually as you've said, in slum areas among underprivileged children. Do you really hope that we will have a structure where everyone gets equal opportunity? I think the is that going to really happen? I think the groundwork is started i think with the new education policy that was released in 2020 i think that has has a lot of right things in it but we have to see how the implementation really happens i think the problem is that the education as a whole has to evolve i think the way that we've been taught for so many years is not relevant in today's world children need to learn how to think how to pivot how to adapt much easier than we had to as children but is that, does that trouble you when you see the gross inequalities that exist? The kind of schools that you had access to, higher education, and then you work among people who just don't have that. Is that something that haunts you at times? Or has it changed you in any way as a no, person? I think children are children. It doesn't matter from which income bracket they come from. I think all children are very, very hungry to learn. And they just need the right outlets and the right exposure to be able to learn and do something. Uh, yes, there are children who are more fortunate than the others and get that exposure a lot easier. But the idea is, at least what I want to do in the next 20 years is to do my part and provide that exposure to the children who don't have that in their school. So that's where Museum of Solution really comes in. You know, because the reason I'm asking you this is that there is a, you know, there are people who will be watching this and say, look, you know, the rich in India don't do enough, don't give back enough. Do you think that's a fair criticism or do you believe, as we are seeing, People need to remove these stereotypes. Can I, I know this question yeah, yeah, is to Sangeeta, yeah, but, but, go ahead, but go before ahead. she answers, you know, once my dad was not well, and uh, we were in Breach Candy, and we, she, me, my mother, and my dad was on a stretcher, and we were going down to the operation theater. So she tells my dad that, you know, we must make a, a hospital in Bombay like Breach Candy. Mm -hmm. So, you know, what my dad, in, on, the, on the operation theater, on the stretcher, he says, he told her that... Uh, Beta, you should do hospitals in villages, in uh, t tertiary towns, right? And not in Bombay. Bombay has many hospitals and there are big guys who, are, who will build hospitals in Bombay, Delhi. You think of the uh, other, other parts of the country. Is, is that what you want to do? I think uh, what, uh, I, I, I retract from what you said. Mm. I think, as you said, that rich are un, uh, unfair in what they are doing. I think we are doing, but it is not enough. We are doing our best, but still it is not enough. But you want to take off from that? You believe that even if you want to give back, should you give back in a way, not so much to the big city, but give back even more to rural India in a way from where his grandfather started as a farmer? Yes, yeah, so I think it is holistic. We are working hmm. mostly in the rural area, but you have to move forward even to the city. Look at the slums in Dharabi. Look at the people here. So I think whichever place we go, we should make a difference. And my only thing is, as you said about all my three kids, what will they be 20 hmm. years from now? I think they have lots to do. They have been given a lot of platform. They have to fly even harder than us. That is my point. You know, I, I've often wondered, that's the great dream for any parent, right? That your yes. kids must fly even higher than you. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, that, I, I mean, you know, if you're doing a marathon, as the two of you are planning, you've got to run faster than he, uh, he does. He has worked much harder, I must say, since compared to my children. They have already got, um, you know, a huge platform of everything. That's okay. That's yeah, no, but, but that is true, right? And possibly his father worked even harder than even he did. Even harder. Because he, you did. Know, he was the yeah. creator. So, yeah. Yeah. in a way, with every generation, it gets easier. Yeah. But yeah. also tougher part because you're going to have to emulate yeah, what he true. did in a way. Yeah. You'll yeah. always be judged yeah. by there's what he did. A, there's a famous saying, no? The first generation creates, the second generation grows, and the third generation destroys. Ah. And we are third generation, all of us. So. <laughs> So I think no, there's there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of pressure. There's a, also a lot of opportunity, and I think the platform that we have is a remarkable platform. And I think we all three are working very hard 
towards building our own businesses and also taking the group forward. I think I, you know, I can point out to the work that we're doing in sports. Um, I think you know, who, nobody would have dreamt 10 years ago that one institute built in Vijayanagar uh, can win India three Olympic medals, let alone one and one gold medal. And Paris, I'm expecting five medals. And like mom was saying, like dad was saying, I think we are also doing a lot of work in rural India because the hunger, the talent and the drive, you won't find in Mumbai, you yeah. won't find in Delhi, you'll find in the villages. And th this is where all these athletes are coming from. So I think, you know, we are now taking sports to different parts of the country. We're taking all our, you know, businesses to different parts of the country. And the talent in this country is so immense. And we have such a big opportunity. We have to do something bigger and bigger and bigger. No, no the, the one thing though that you all haven't done before I take a break is Netagiri. You know, <laughs> the, 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 that's the, enough blood though. <laughs> yeah, the, Naveen became a member of parliament. My father was your member father of did, your mother also yes, uh, yes. dabbled in politics, uh, yes. but you stayed away. Yeah, yeah. Is that the Mumbai car in you saying that ye sab Dilli walo ko karna hai? <laughs> Is that sort a bit of, of that? Sort of, yeah. So when we go to Hisar, like we go Diwali, Holi, we go to Hisar, right? So, uh, so there is a lot of uh, this uh, passion or this feeling comes in because you have thousands of people come and meet you and and jai 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 goes on and you know so you feel ki yeah, you can also do politics but because of Bombay you feel that you are meant to do business you're meant to give back to this country through through creating a bigger economy for the nation mm. so that's what I'm fit for I'm I mean there are uh, what maybe 10,000 politicians who are in the parliaments or assemblies and all those things so I will be one of them I always tell my brother Naveen also oh, what is this or my mother what is this it's, this is not for us we are meant for something different. We were, we were, you know, supposed to do. Okay, my dad joined politics when he became 65, and he decided that okay, now I've done enough. Now I can go into politics. So, okay. And that was my my dad was always, uh, you know, very old school, very Haryanvi. Loved the villagers because he was a villager himself. So he really wanted to do something truly for the villagers. But I don't think anybody else uh, really today. I don't want to be controversial, so therefore I'll stop here. But <laughs> <laughs> we, won't, we, we won't talk too much politics. You're with India Today, India Tomorrow, and we are in a special interaction conversation with Sajjan, Sangeeta, Tarini, Tanvi, and Parth. I've got bang all the names. On. Bang on. I've got all the names. Bang on. All the T's. My daughter is a Tarini, so I have oh. special reason to remember that name. Uh, but, uh, you know, he, he mentioned the word hunger. You know, I've often wondered whether the next generation has the same hunger as the previous generation. Or, you know, is that, is that something you've instilled in them? To sort of expand, to grow, so, the fire in the belly. Yeah, so we, uh, you know, th that's what uh, I was always a uh, little bit um, subconsciously concerned. That, uh, you know, they should not uh, live abroad. They can, they could live in London, luxurious life. Or many Indians have left for London, right, living mm. luxurious life. So I was always a little bit subconsciously concerned that that shouldn't happen. So I always, we used to spend our weekends uh, in our factories, whether when we were building the one outside Mumbai. Both of you together? Both of you, always. Wow. We travel together yeah. with all the, we are full. So it was a joint enterprise. Yeah, yeah, joint enterprise. Full on joint enterprise. Yeah, when she was... had any family holiday homes. The holiday homes were in the factory. In the factory. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. And even if you go to our factories and you see our holiday homes, you will say you don't need any holiday home. Right. They're really beautiful. They're really amazing. So, so we cre she created the, them, and we lived together. And like when uh, I mean, because they were girls, and they were their interests were not in the steel business. But this guy even worked like a worker in in our steel plant on the shop floor. On the shop floor when he was uh, out of school, I think. Yeah, right? sixteen. Yeah, sixteen. So he was in the slag pit and moving the slag and all. Oh, you know. Really? So yeah. So so it was instilled, kind of you know, not deliberately, but uh, it happened that way. Is, is that the challenge in a way, I think, for, for the next generation, that you keep the hunger going uh, and, and keep building something new. It's a process of renewal of expansion. I guess that's, that's what tomorrow is, right? That no, I, think, I think for all of us, like growing up, we would always see mom and dad. And whenever we would go abroad, even for a holiday, if a road is nice, they would take photos and say, you know, we need to make this. If a building is nice, they would say, you know, look at this building, one day we have to make something like this. And today all of us, whether it's my cement business or her real estate or her museum, our aim is to make it the world's best, not India's best. We all say that this building that Kokodidi is making 
is going to be the world's best building. Wow. The museum, children's museum she is making has to be better than Boston Children's Museum. My cement factory has to be much, much better than any cement factory in the world. And I think that's what they have really instilled in us, that we have to be the best in whatever we do at a global level. You know, I think that's a wonderful way, in a way, to conclude. Because I think that, in a way, symbolizes what you want to see in New India. To just give them the wings to fly and fly even higher than, uh, than the previous generation did. It's been wonderful talking to all of you, inspiring, in a way, to, to see the passion and the energy and the ability to innovate. So may you grow from strength to strength. And uh, you're not going to plan to retire to Hisar, right? <laughs> <laughs> That's not, not in a the, hurry, for not sure. Not in a hurry, for sure. OK, wonderful. From Hisar to Mumbai to much more, to Olympic glory. Thank you all very much for joining me here on India Today, India Tomorrow. That's it on this special episode. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.